Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Red X podcast. Thank you for being here with us. I'm Tyler Fenn, Director of Sales here at Red X, uh, and I am very excited about the episode that we have today. We have Brooke Signs with Remax with us. Brooke, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We are going to talk about some amazing stuff. We're going to talk primarily about lead follow-up, which I think everybody who ever watches this uh, watches this podcast. That's that's isn't that something we can always improve on? Something we can always get better at? Of course. And who wants to forget about your leads? That's right. huge. Absolutely. So before we get into it, and you and you take us to school on on uh, on how to have effective and efficient lead follow up, why don't you introduce yourself to our uh, to our listeners? Because your your uh, your short time in real estate is impressive to say the least. So please let us let everybody know who they're who they're being coached by today. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. So I am just celebrated my five year anniversary in January of being uh, being a realtor, being a broker. And I just I absolutely found my passion. Um, I am a mother of an 11 year old and eight year old kid. And they my past career, I uh, used to travel a lot. And they said, Mom, we don't want you to go. And I mean, to tell that to your mom, it's like, rip my heart out and stomp on it. Right. Yeah. So I said, okay, I have to make a change. And I, I totally did all the personality tests and everything online, you know, took all those fun things and said, okay, what career, what business should I get into? And real estate kept coming up and I'm a people person and just love it. So I interviewed with or interviewed the local real estate company down the street, Remax, and my parents always used Remax agent. So it was kind of a no brainer for me, but I uh, got into the business my first year in the business. I was blessed. I sold 30 houses and won the rising star for Remax that year for the state and just never looked back. And I've created a team now in two different states in the West Michigan area and also Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, yeah, I bill myself as the OCD Realtor. So I'm sure you all can imagine I have checklists and steps, you know, walk my clients through step by step of the process, but I also do it at home. So I have monthly menus. I can tell you, Tyler, what we're having a month from now for dinner. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome and impressive. And I mean, in addition to, in addition to, I mean, 30 homes in your first year is fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, but in addition to that, you, uh, you, you've you actually begun in the last few years teaching other agents. Is that correct? I have. I started coaching and didn't even know that was a passion of mine until I started. That's awesome. So we're, we're really excited. Um, I'm very excited to talk about lead follow-up because as I mentioned, I think this is something that everybody can get better at. Uh, and so, so let me ask this question. And, and it might seem like the no brainer question, but why is that important, right? I, if I've got a new flow of leads coming in all the time, why is, is effective follow-up so important? Why does that matter? So I'll tell you, if I'm at the grocery store right now and I run into Joe Schmo, who tells me, hey, Brooke, my mom's going to be looking. She's not ready now, but six months from now, she's going to be ready. She just has to finish that basement project she was working on or whatever. So I'm like, great. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got the realtor. Hi, I'm excited. I just got a new lead and I'm, you know, I finish up my grocery shopping and I'm thinking all about Joe Schmo's mom. Well, then my phone rings on my way home and it's Sally Smith and she's looking for a home tomorrow. I forget all about Joe Schmo's mom because she's six months down the road. So the whole point in having a lead system, and of course the OCD realtor will have one, um, but having that in a follow-up system is so important because we, hopefully our phone's ringing, and if not, hopefully we're calling people. And so our leads, our funnel continues to grow. And we can't be forgetting about people because that's all of our, I mean, that's our money just being flushed down the toilet. So let me ask this question because because I, I've been here at Red X over 12 years. And so I've talked to a lot of people who are really good at follow-up and, and there's, there's, in my opinion, there's two schools of thought, right? There's the one who, who might write off Joe Schmo's mom right away because it's six months down the road and they go, look, this, this is, 
I can only focus on what's going to close in the next 30 days or what, what I can put on the market in the next 30 days. And then there's, and then there's this other school of thought that says, no, you, we've got to, we've got to ha have a system in place to catch all of that. So nothing is slipping through the cracks. What side of the spectrum do you fall on? Oh, I am. If this is not slipping through the cracks I'm up here, okay, no one, right. if you're not looking to buy a house for 10 years, Tyler, I'm going to still follow up with you. It does not awesome. matter. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about that. How do you do that? Because, because that's hard, right? When you have, when you're, when you're having conversations all the time, you're meeting new people that becomes, that becomes hard. So, so OCD realtor educate us. How does, <laughs> how does your system for lead follow-up look and how can people duplicate it? Well, let me first start by telling you how it doesn't look because I okay. know my first year in the business, people are calling me left and right. I'm calling people and I'm writing people's name and phone numbers on my hand. I'm writing it on sticky notes wherever I am. I'm writing it on the back of my checkbook. And I know there are so many that are watching this right now that are doing the same thing. And I'm telling you, you have to stop. There is, that is no system or organization to follow up with. That's not a way to put food on your table and feed your family. So what I what I found works for me is having a system. And so anytime I find someone that or hear of someone or meet someone that is looking to possibly buy, I'm listening for clues and cues that, I mean, a change in life means a lot of times a change in real estate. I mean, if it's a new baby in their life, if it's, or even a pregnancy, if it's a, uh, sadly, a divorce, if it's a graduation, I mean, there are so many things that can lead to a life change, which I've attributed a lot of times to a real estate change. But I have a spreadsheet. Go figure that I would have a spreadsheet, but I have names, emails, phone numbers. I have as far down as, you know, what property value they're looking to spend. I have notes about them. So if I do, and I'm, you know, Joe Schmo is my favorite guy. So I'm just going to keep referring to him. But yeah. if I talk to Joe Schmo's mom and I know, okay, well, you know, she's married to, she's married to Frank, I don't know. And then they have two more kids and their names, you know, and I, and their dog's name is Max, you know, so I keep all of that information in that note section too. So if I call you Tyler and I say, Hey, you know, how are you doing? I just wanted to follow up and make sure that search that I have you on is okay. Or see if you have any questions or anything I can help if, or when you're ready. And you say, Oh yeah, I just got done with my son's baseball game. And you say, Oh, how is Alan doing? Where does that hit you? The fact that I remembered your son's name and, you know, just continue to go on. And that's what that's what we want to do. We're building relationships with people. We're deepening those relationships. We're continuing to stay in touch so that when real estate comes up, they can't help but think about the realtor that calls them all the time, not bugging them, but to stay top of mind and actually care. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to ask you in just a minute, I'm going to ask what, what does, let's say we get Joe Schmo as a lead. Now, how often are you reaching out to him and using what methods? But before you answer that, let me welcome our listeners one more time. Thank you everybody for being with us. So whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or, uh, or right on our website, watching this video, make sure that if you have questions for that you uh, that you chat those in there. Those will be relayed over to me, uh, and she'll take us to school and give us some education about these things. So let me ask that. Let's say you run into Joe Schmo at the grocery store. He says his mom's getting ready to, ready to sell a home, and and that's still six months down the road. What does the follow up process look at, look like exactly for Joe Schmo's mom? How often are you following up? What methods are you using? What are you using as a reason to reach out? Those types of things. So. To get 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 real granular granular with us to take Joshua's mom from a lead to a client six months from now. Yeah, absolutely. So I categorize my leads. They're A, Bs, or Cs. So an A is someone you always have an appointment with. Now I tell people be very careful categorizing someone as an A. You literally always have to have an appointment with them. If you do not then just, just call them a B. They're so, ready to go. Oh, sorry, go so, ahead. So well, give us an example of somebody who might be an A. Because so even, an, even as I'm thinking about this, I'm going, man, I, 
I can't think yeah, of anybody that I would always, <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anybody. Yeah. So an A client, I mean, right now, and I think kind of across the country, we're hitting low inventory, multiple offer situations, you know, the market is hot. So think of someone that their lease is up in 30 days, they need a house now. They're not being okay. super specific. You are literally taking them out every day. You're showing them houses and they need to find something ASAP. It's someone that you are, you're showing until you sell. So these, are, these are your people that are really motivated for a real estate transaction. Yeah, whether, I mean, whether to buy or sell. Absolutely. They've okay. already sold their house. They need to move. I mean, they've got, they're looking. Your B clients then are someone that aren't, they're not ready to buy maybe for the next 30 to 60, maybe 90 days. But they could be someone, they could technically be an A. Maybe they're ready to buy, but they want to make sure that that house has the main floor master. Or they, they just have a, a few particulars that they're not going to buy just any house. So you have to you have to keep them on that search. You have to keep an eye on, on what's on the market for them. When the right house or something that seems like a fit for them comes up, they want to go and see it, but you're not showing them every day. Does that make right. sense? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So those are people, like I said, they're going to buy in the next couple months. They're ready. Okay. And then you have Joe's mom. You have your C clients. You have the clients that are anywhere from 90 days to, I mean, I'm not joking, 10 years. I mean, they're out there. So they're not buying anytime soon. But I will tell you that they end up coming and turning from a C client to an A client overnight. Okay. Awesome. We like that. Oh, yeah. We'll take it all day long, right? Those are our favorite. But those are the ones that people really have to watch. So if you're doing this system and you are talking about moving, you're probably all over online. You're searching Zillow. You're on Realtor.com. You're on Homes.com. I mean, you're looking for homes, which means that you're probably on many Realtors lead lists, right? You're getting you're getting property searches and you're getting all that sent to you. So if no one is following up with you and they don't care enough to nurture you as a lead month to month, then you're just going to get a, a search someday. And that's the house. That's the one. So you've told, some, you've told all the other realtors that, hey, I'm not moving for another year. So what do they have? They have you in their CRM, maybe, maybe 50% of them have you in their CRM to call you in a year because they actually believe you. Okay. So realistically, you're set up on that safe search. You get an email that said that has this house. I mean, it's an aha moment. And you say, that's the house. That's the one. So what do you do? You go to the open house that they're having and you write an offer with the real tour of the day, you know, either the person holding the open house or you just click around online a second and some realtor gets lucky. But if you are being systematic and you're following up with that person once a month for however, you know, for a year, for six months, for three years, who are they going to, when they walk in that open house and they say, who are you working with? Are you working with a realtor? You're going to say, yeah, I'm working with Brooke. She calls me every month. <laughs> right. Like they're not forgetting my name. So what is, so, so, I, I love this ABC method, right? Is is and and the whole goal it seems like is to move people from C to B or C to A or B to A, correct? I mean, the goal is to is to move people through this pipeline so that they're A buyers or A clients as often as we can. With these, with the people that are ninety days or more, right? With your C clients, when you're reaching out to them on a monthly basis, what does that look like? Is it a phone call? Is it a text message? Why are you reaching out? I mean, what's your reason? Hey, I'm calling because happy 4th of July or whatever. So what does that look like so that people can walk away from this and go, hey, every month I should be reaching out and here's what Brooke says to be doing. Yeah, there are all sorts of different things and different methods. So let me go back a little bit because okay. um, I just want everyone watching to understand that the lead tracker is not necessarily meant to take people from a C to a B to an A, but it's to make sure that people aren't slipping through the cracks. 
Gotcha. The point of the lead tracker is to track people. So you're just, you've got people in there and you're keeping track. You're not losing track or having anyone slip through the cracks that may be a potential home buyer or seller at some point. And then from there, what you want to do, I reach out and I always say, reach out the way that they reach out to you. So if they are, I mean, I have some clients that only text. Okay. They don't want, they, they don't call me. I have some clients that only call. They don't text. There are some clients that only reach out to me through Facebook Messenger. I mean, however, they're typically reaching out to you in their most preferred method. Okay, yeah. Makes total sense, right? I mean, if I'm a text message guy, I'm going to respond to a text message. Right. Yep. So, so if you okay. go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, well, what's the default? What if you don't know for sure? Um, I usually, so if I know their age group, I mean, I think there is an age group um, that doesn't like to text and I'm okay with that. So if I know that there may be an elderly client, I'll call just because gotcha. I know that already. Otherwise, my default is going to go to what I prefer, and it's texting because okay. I can get it done a lot quicker if I can just go through and text and kind of touch these people um, and get that off, you know, move them forward and track that on the tracker. So typically what it looks like, Tyler, is me, you know, I usually say, hey, Tyler, I know you're looking for that bedroom two bath in Riverside Gardens neighborhood. It hasn't come up yet. I'm still watching the search criteria. If there's anything you want me to change in the search or any of that, please let me know. Now, and, and here's another question is in your spreadsheets, do you have a column that tells you what the preferred method of communication is? Like, do you know, these are all my text people. These are all my call people. Yes. You have of, to track that. Course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to, I mean, cause so again, that first year in real estate, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I had no transaction coordinator because I was bound and determined I'm a knowledge or education junkie. And so I want to know everything about everything, which anyone watching this probably is laughing because there's no way that you know everything. You can't know everything about real estate. Right. That's one of the fun things. Every day is different. Septic issues smacks, you know, right in the forehead. <laughs> so, but what, what it is, is you just, you have to be able to track the leads. You have to know, you have to have that system and you got to get things out of your head. So the more I could get out of my mind, I mean, I used to, I used to serve and wait tables and I would wake up at four in the morning and say, oh my gosh, I forgot to bring that guy's diet Coke. <laughs> And I don't want to be like that in real estate. So okay. if, you, if you track and you're staying on touch with people, you're, they think you're, you care or they know that you care and you've got that system to do so that makes your life easier. And so you don't want to be a chicken running around with, the head cut off, with your head cut off and you don't want your head just full of random things. Just get them on the tracker. I, I, I love it. And I love this. And thank you for clarifying because the way I interpreted was you move C's to B's and B's to A's, but it's like you said, no, it, it, I mean, when they're ready to do that, that's ideal, but you want to keep track of them as they do. So if, if it's a C that lasts for three years, like you said, you want to make sure that when, when it, when it's time for them to buy or sell, that you're there to be the one that's been top of mind for the past three years. I love yeah. that. Thank you. Now we've got one question from Tom Follier that's come in and he wants to know if you have a preferred CRM. So we know that you're working from a spreadsheet. What <laughs> other systems and tools are you using? Because, because that, that, I mean, that's a, in fact, even the term CRM is kind of a hot topic in real estate the last year or two. So what, what systems besides your spreadsheet, if any, are you using? Oh, I'm using a lot. <laughs> okay. So as a Remax girl, of course, Bouge is, you know, the hot topic coming mm -hmm. out. Um, it's, it's still got some, you know, growing pains, I think, I believe there. Um, I haven't completely cut ties with the CRM I've used kind of from the very beginning, just because I want to make sure that it does have all my I's dotted and T's crossed till I move or yeah. before I move over. So currently I'm using top producer. I know okay. that it's, it's a go-to for many across the board. Um, when we talk CRM, it's actually funny because my husband sells them 
for a living, he sells CRMs to lar large insurance corporations. Okay. So he took a look at top producer and he's like, it does all that. And you pay 30 bucks a month or whatever. And so that made me feel good. You know, yeah, I only pay $30 a month per license or whatever it is. But I think it doesn't, honestly, I don't think it matters what CRM okay. you use as long as you use one. So you're, you're somewhat CRM agnostic, just as long as they pick one and, <laughs> and go with it. Is that, yeah, is that just right? Use it. Yes. Gotcha. Cause so many people they'll say, Oh yeah, I have a CRM, but they don't use it. All right. That, I, and I, and I actually feel the same way. I feel like a lot of people do sign up for a program and, and then you know, they might only utilize 2% of the features, right. Or 5% of the features when there's, when there's things that are built in there, that that is really designed to help you be successful. So, um, I, it, w what else besides besides top producer? It sounds like you're trying to make a ma a move over to Bouge, but hasn't haven't quite committed fully yet. Yeah. And then your spreadsheet. What else? So it, it, are there other things that you're using in your lead follow up? Oh boy. Well, I have a um, we have we have a lot of different trackers and systems. I will tell you, I swear by Google Drive, having all my files in there so I can access them from my phone, from my computer, and my admin team can also do that as well so we can be working on things together. Um, that's another thing. If you don't have an admin, you are one. So if you can have someone that even if you have a transaction coordinator that gets paid when you get paid, that makes you be able to focus on the leads throughout the day instead of the paperwork part of the process, because that can get you, I mean, that gets so many agents slumped up throughout the day and throughout the process. And then from there, I do have what, um, what we call a top 50 tracker. So I have okay. kind of my MVPs and those are my 50 favorite people um, that are just people that I follow up with once a month for 12 months. And again, that's a spreadsheet. It has what's important to them. So if I know that someone's a runner and I see a new trail that they're putting in or a new 5K that's coming in, you know, I'll, I'll send her a text and say, hey, I know you love to run. Have you checked out this trail yet? And so that's what I mean when we talk about deepening relationships with people. If, if they know that they're top of mind to you, you're probably going to be top of mind to them. Now these no, I don't mean to get off track too much for you. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. But and and I love this idea of top fifty. Now these top fifty are different than the A's, B's, and C's. It sounds like. Correct. So they can include. I mean, my top fifty. I do have past clients on there, but they're people that know, like, and trust you, or that okay. you are already doing business with. Okay. And is the main goal behind the top 50, is it to transact with those top 50 or generate referrals from those top 50? It's or both. both. Okay. Yeah, both. And so of Ooh. course the spreadsheet has a tracker on it so we can track how many or if they send us referrals and who they send. And then also if they are using us throughout that 12 months. So at the end, so basically January 1st, we create our list of 50 people. December 31st, we look at that whole year and we say, okay, these people sent us or used us that year. These people didn't. So you don't have to unfriend them. You don't have to remove family members from your Thanksgiving table, but they're just not good. Some people aren't good at referring. And so you take them off the list and you replace them with people that are. I, I Which... In theory, right, over time, you end up with the top 50 that are continually referring you business. That's the goal. I, I mean, that's the goal is to have 50 people always referring you business, which is fantastic. Now, we've got another question from Amanda Smith. Amanda, thank you for joining us again. Uh, and, and this is her question. She says, if prospects unsubscribe for your emails, do you continue to reach out to them in other ways or do you remove them from your from your efforts altogether? And that's actually a really common conversation that people are having because email marketing is becoming more and more common. So if somebody hits that unsubscribe button, do you do you continue to follow up with them in other ways or do you or do you respect that unsubscribe and remove them from all of your your efforts? Well, I'll say I mean, I don't like to flush money down the toilet, so I will definitely not stop 
following up at that point. So awesome. I say, Amanda, give them a call. And you know what I've done before is I'll just call and say, hey, I noticed that you unsubscribed. Was I sending stuff too frequently? Was I sending things, you know, were you receiving things from me that were not relevant to you? What can I do to better serve you? I, I, that's, I, I love that. I just get them on the phone and ask, right? And if there's, if there's any kind of relationship, it makes it really easy to do that, correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And someone does, I mean, I, no one wants to tell you they don't like you or they don't want your information. So it's much harder to do through the phone than through an email. <laughs> Amen to that. I would much rather be <laughs> on the phone than, than, than an email. All right. That's, there's always more success there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. And thank you, Amanda. And, uh, and those of you who have asked questions so far, if you have other questions, again, continue to, to uh, message those in. We'll make sure that Brooke, uh, Brooke gives us some education here. Now, Brooke, let me, let me change the topic slightly here. Um, is, is any of this different when prospecting? Because we talked pre-show just about geo leads and just listed, just sold campaigns. And, and, and you're using Red X's tool to be able to do that. Does any of this change with these, uh, with the contacts that you're making through geo leads? Do you have other systems in place for them? Or is it, is it the same process regardless of where the lead comes from? It's the same process because I think as realtors, we have shiny object syndrome over and over and over again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, someone's using this lead system and it really works. So we're going to jump over there and then, oh, this CRM and this. So just use it. It's like a diet. You know, if you're going to go Weight Watchers, then go all in. If you're going to go keto, then go all in. But don't just do each one for two weeks. It's You're never going to see any results. So I put everything on the lead tracker. And, and that's the other thing that when we are doing this lead follow-up, it doesn't go, it doesn't drive me crazy throughout the week that, oh yeah, and you have to touch base with this person and don't forget this person and don't forget that person. Every Wednesday at 1030, I'm following up with my leads. So from 1030 till 12 noon, I follow up with my leads every Wednesday and I know they're taken care of. So the A's that I have appointments with, you know, they're all, I already have an appointment. The B's I'm touching twice a week and the C's, they're hearing from me once a month. And the same thing when we're doing geo leads, which I love. For those of you that are not using geo leads, you have to, you have to utilize this system. It's amazing. So we use it a couple different ways. Can I go into that, Tyler? Is that okay? Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I think that lead generation is equally as important to the follow-up portion, right? You can't you can't follow up with anybody if there's nothing there. So yeah, yeah. please help us understand how you utilize that. Yeah. And then once you get those leads, like having that follow-up program is extremely important. So your work isn't for nothing. It's just like when you're farming a neighborhood, you know, it's going to take 12 to 18 months or longer to pay off. So you can't just do it once and expect cherries to fall. So what I always do anytime that we are listing a property. So if I'm listing 123 Main Street, this is the first way that I use geo leads. So I go into the system and I search that property address and I search the closest 200 homes. And this right. is in my marketing presentation. If I'm sitting at your table and you're a seller across the table, this is part of my marketing. And what I say is part of my aggressive strategy. So I'm pulling down those 200 numbers. We all know that there's do not call numbers in there. I scrub those out. I'm not going to get anyone ticked off at me. And then I start calling and I say, hey, this is Brooke at Remax and Grand Allure Home Group, we're listing a home in your neighborhood, 123 Main Street. It just went live at 8 a.m. this morning. We're doing an open house on Saturday and Sunday from noon to three. I know that people like to live near their friends, family members, and coworkers. So if you have someone that's looking to move into the area, do you mind bringing them by our open house this weekend? I want you to come and check it out. So you're, you're using geo leads as a way to fill your open house. Yeah. And sell houses and get leads because those people do you, I mean, how many agents are really doing this across the country? So right. for sellers in that area or in that neighborhood to get that phone call, they know that I'm working. They know I'm not just putting a sign in the yard and hoping it sells. Yeah. Awesome. 
So you so call the closest a- 200 people, invite them to an open house. Yeah. I love it. I say come by and bring, you know, people are always tagging their friends on Facebook, like come be my neighbor, or, you know, coworkers and such. I, I mean, you wouldn't see me tagging my family, like come be my neighbor. I mean, there's a distance that I need <laughs> to have there, but a lot of people do it. And so yeah. if that can even drum up business for your open house or if it drums up a lead for you in the future, anyone that you have a great conversation with, then you add to your lead tracker. And even if they say, you know, I don't have anyone looking to buy in the neighborhood right now, you can add them to your lead tracker and follow up. Awesome. Then, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that that's fantastic. I mean, as, as you're making those contacts, then it's easy for you to simply put them into that system that you have, which, which goes back to what we were saying is right. You have to have a system and you have to be able to use it, but any system is better than nothing at all. Right. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I love it here. We we've, we've just had a question come in from Susan. Thank you, Susan. She says, do you have a separate open house outside of the weekend or, or for just, for just the neighbors? So these 200 people that you're calling, are you doing a, a particular open house for those people or are you looping that in with the general open house that's going to go for a day or two? I'm looping it in because realistically, if you pull 200, you scrub off the do not calls, you're really maybe getting to 100 phone numbers. And out of those, how many, you know, you're leaving voicemail messages, you are talking to some people, but that's a great way to fill your open house with other people there because that shows off to the neighbors. That shows that you're getting that that open house filled up. So I say, come all at once. Of course, right now with social distancing guidelines, things are a little different. So you may yeah. have to alter it. But I mean, it. sometimes I've done come 30 minutes prior and I've done kind of a nosy neighbor, like, hey, get to know your neighbor's house. Um, but I think, I mean, agents are getting their 30 minutes prior to set up. And it just, in my experience, it's been best to do it at the same time. Well, and, and there's and there's something to the herd mentality also, right? When you drive by yeah. or walk into an open house and, and it's packed, there you instantly, even if you're not interested in the house, you go, oh, well, what's everybody looking at, right? And, yeah. and, and, uh, and, and that there's an energy to a full open house that just isn't the same when you have a handful of people spread out, spread out through the, through the weekend. So I like the idea of looping them in together. I think there's probably pros and cons to both, but, uh, but I like that idea of packing as many people in as you can, assuming social distancing allows. For it, I know right? we have to be careful what we're saying yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is a weird time. Um, I, I, I love this. So let me ask this question is, is, uh, let's say I'm bra- a brand new agent and I come to you and I say, Brooke, I don't have a system. Everything that we've talked about can seem overwhelming to somebody. So what, what's the advice that you'd give to a new agent to say, here's the first thing to do. Maybe, maybe the first three things that you need to do to really begin a, a good lead follow-up system, because it's kind of a living document, right? It's a, it's a system that you're always tweaking and analyzing, but what do you feel like are the most important things right away that an agent needs to know to kick off and start creating some sort of lead follow-up system that's going to be effective? Yeah, that's a great question, Tyler. So I would say to any new agent, I think creating a business plan is the most important. And I think so many agents, you know, we're initially, we're on an Island by ourselves because we're all these little CEOs walking around wanting to sell houses. And so if you can create a business plan that actually shows your vision and your goals, I mean, I do vision boards, but set some goals and know, okay, I want to sell 15 houses this year, or I want to sell 24 houses this year. And then we break it down to really figure out how to get there and set that roadmap. So if we want to sell 24 houses this year, that's only two per month. And then how are we going to get those two per month? That's one every other week. So if you can break it down and say, okay, here's what, here's where I'm going to get my business or my leads from. And then it's progress, not perfection. So continue to make progress in that area to better yourself in handling those leads. So the way that I do it is I have four areas of business 
that I'm always looking, you know, every year and I create my business plan each year. I have four areas of business okay. that I want to tackle to hit my goals. And what I aim for, so if my goal is 24 this year, I'm going to aim for 24 transactions out of the first area of business. I'm going to aim for 24 transactions out of that second area of business or lead flow. I'm going to aim for 24 out of the third. So realistically, I'm almost aiming for 100 transactions. So at that point, it's impossible for me not to hit my goal of 24. So, so, and, and, and so I was just about to ask point, a question that just came in, right? Somebody who, somebody says, well, what are those four areas? Yeah. And I would imagine that they're going to be different depending on, depending on somebody's niche and skill and that sort of thing. But give us an example of some of these four areas where, where you're, you're shooting for this goal of, of 24 transactions or whatever the number is every year. What are some of those areas? Yeah. Or, yeah. Absolutely. So I always say, do what you like to do. If you hate door knocking, do not have door knocking be one of your areas because you are going to procrastinate. You are never going to door knock. So just realize that that's not a fit for you. And then figure out what areas are, like what type of personality you, personality style you are and what you like doing. So, I mean, it could be working with and partnering up with attorneys, divorce attorneys, probate attorneys. It can be going after for sale by owners. It can be expired. It can be red X's for rent by owners, which is a great system. It can be um, HR departments and going into HRs at local corporations. It can be niche marketing. So you can, I mean, I know I have a coaching client that his wife is a doctor. And so he kind of has an in that way. So he set up his own kind of lead generating website for doctors in the area. So it can be doctors, it can be dentists. I mean, it can be all those different, any sorts of sort of different specific professional niche marketing. Um, it can be geo farming. It can be open houses. It, it always kind of the only thing that I definitely say you should have at least one of those areas of business should be your top fifty or and or your sphere of influence. So you should always make sure that you're diving into people before purchasing, you know, online high volume lead generation, dive into the people that already know, like, and trust you that you don't have to sell yourself and then start adding on the leads. I, I, I love that. So, um, and I love this idea of going, Hey, my goal is 24. Well, let me try to get 24 from every pillar of my business and, and then kind of a, Hey, if I shoot for the moon and miss, I land on the stars type of mentality, right? I'm always, yep. I'm always on track for my goal. Okay. Um, and I just had a question and then it just, it just flew from my mind right here. But um, as you're, as a, with a new agent, oh, here it is. Okay. So as a new agent, um, sphere of influence, right, would, would, is, is pretty much like, and like you said, that's the one that should probably always be in there. As a new agent who may not have those other three pillars of business, um, you'd, you'd mentioned, you know, find out what you like to do. What if they don't know what they like to do yet? I mean, what, what then? I mean, if I'm a new agent, well, I go, yeah, try I door can. knocking and see if you like that. Like, <laughs> okay. Start, you. Know. <laughs> so it, it really, you know, it's something that it can't, it's not going to probably happen overnight. Like you have to see if you like doing it. And maybe if you're good at it or not, if you're not good at it, you might want to figure out, is it a script issue? You know, am, do I have to change what I'm saying? Am I saying something wrong that's turning these people off right away? Because it could be that too. It couldn't be, or it could be that it's not necessarily a bad area of business for you, but you just have to make that little switch. And at that point, like once you say, okay, my goal is 24 transactions for the year, then I know we were talking about this for the call. You have to inspect what you expect. If you are expecting yourself to do at least two transactions a month, if you get off track, then you need to go back. You need to make sure that you're tracking it. You know your numbers. And then you need to go back and say, shoot, I need for the next three months, I need three. And figure out how to get back on track. But you're never going to know if you get to the end of the year and you're like, oh man, I hit 20 transactions. 
you could have you could have stepped it up. Yeah, it would be a real shame if you were shooting for 24 and and didn't know until December 30th that you were only at 20, right? That, that and and again, we you'd mentioned this pre-show, this phrase inspect what you expect, right? Which to me even pre-show I was like that is awesome, right? Such a great <laughs> phrase to 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 continually assess, continually look and see if your expectations are on track and if you're and if you're effort matches your expectations, right? I, I, I love the idea of that. Um, I, uh, uh, another question from Amanda Smith. She says, if your sphere of influence is largely comprised of former work contacts, should we pick four areas of interest to pursue leads? So, so I think she's saying, Hey, should, should we have four outside of, of our, of our sphere of influence or, um, and, and maybe clarify that for us is four kind of the magic number to shoot for. Yeah, I think four is the magic number. So just include that sphere is going to be one of them and then shoot for three. Um, of course, the OCD Realtor here has, you know, basically Mondays are always crazy because I'm following up. I'm doing, you know, team meetings with my team and everything else. So what I do, and I know it's a shocker, but so I divide up those four areas of business for the rest of my week. So business area number one, pillar number one, because I call it my four pillars. Pillar number one, I focus on that on Tuesdays. Pillar number three is Wednesday, or I'm sorry, pillar number one, pillar number two is Wednesdays, pillar number three is Thursday, and pillar number four is Friday. So I don't go into the office each day, and that's another thing. I go into my office each day, um, but I really focus on, okay, this is my geo leads day. Or this is my for rent by owner day. I mean, if you wear that hat, what you focus on is what you become. So if you focus on, I need my 24 transactions from this area of business and you focus on it, you give it time each week. I mean, you can't help, but you just have to have that systematic business. You can't help, but not hit your goals at that point. And that's why I said it's important too, to have that lead follow-up time. So if you know, and I'm going to go off on a tangent. I'm sorry, Tyler. That's okay. If, if you have on your schedule that your lead follow-up time is Wednesday from 1030 to 12 noon, like I said, mine is. So if someone wants to see a house before between that time frame, my answer is no. You cannot. Yeah. So here's a little trick for any agents that are watching. You have an appointment. I don't care. If it's an appointment for you at the gym, I don't care if it's an appointment with your family or to watch your kid play soccer, or if you actually have an appointment with another buyer or seller, you cannot block over that time. And that's how you stay on track and you're not a pop tart agent popping up as soon as your phone rings to go show a house. So if someone calls me and they want to see a house and I know we'll, we might get a ton of comments in that say, well, it's a hot market right now. We have to show when we have to show. I totally get that. I'm in real estate. I'm showing houses too, but it's just not going to be during my lead follow-up time. So I have a very specific schedule, which again, it's my ideal schedule. It's never going to be perfect and I stick to it 100%, but I know that my time with my family is important. And I know that certain things are important to my business. I'm going to put those things in first. And the rest of the time, I can allocate to showing houses, doing listing appointments, and everything else. So make sure to use that verbiage. Because I'll tell you, I've lost clients saying, oh, I have to go to my son's, soccer's, or my son's soccer game. People act like they have a heart, but they don't. They ha Them having buying that house is what's important to them at that moment. And so you just need to keep it professional and say, I have an appointment at that time. And if it really was an appointment with another buyer or seller, you wouldn't schedule over that. So don't schedule over your your business or your personal life either. Off my soapbox. Sorry. I, I, no, and I think that's a I think that's an amazing soapbox. I I talk to a lot of new agents and I usually I usually recommend as one of the things to get started is create a schedule and stick to it, right? Like, 
like such a novel idea, create a schedule and stick to it. So you've you validated my thoughts here. <laughs> Rick, thank you. Um, a, a couple of questions here, and 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 this I, this idea of four pillars, right? And and uh, I think I think this is resonating with people based on some of the comments and things. But Mary's asked. She says, if you're in a new state, you don't know anybody, uh, you don't know a single person. What are suggestions for maybe some of these pillars to try out? And I know what I'd suggest, but I want to hear what you'd suggest, Brooke. Oh, Mary, let me tell you that I'm going through that right now. So I can tell you exactly. So I born and raised in West Michigan, just picked up and moved my family and all of us to Charlotte, North Carolina. So I am a new agent starting over um, because I, I mean, I love the Carolina weather and I've I've got a great friend of mine that's in real estate that's retiring. And so we're kind of transitioning her out and me in. So it was it was just kind of a good opportunity all around. But I'm doing that right now. So one of the biggest things I actually um, there are a ton of different ideas here, Mary. Again, just kind of think about what you like to do. And maybe if you have a family, what your family likes to do. I sent out we're um, in an area on a lake. Lake Norman. And so that's one of the biggest lakes in this region. So I bought my family all LKN, that's Lake Norman t-shirts. We took a family photo just in the driveway of our house and I sent it out to all 1100 people in the new neighborhood we just moved into. And I said, hey, we're the signs family. We like boating. We like, you know, you'll see us out walking, maybe playing soccer on the green feel free to wave. By the way, I'm in real estate. I'd love to help. I mean, I just literally yesterday got a call from someone that wants to list their $800,000 house and wants to buy a $1.3 million house on the lake that called because of that letter. That was one letter. So yeah, I mean, I was doing a little happy dance, but it's a great, I mean, I didn't plan on that, but that was great for, for me to be able to share with you, Mary. Um, also, you know, think about things like you just have to get out there. So join I mean, meetup.com is a free site that you can you can find people that like doing what you want to do. There are people that do everything there. There are people that play video games. There are trivia. There are joggers, walkers, sprinters, <laughs> moms with babies, moms. I mean, there are ladies that like wine. I mean, there are a ton of different groups, so you can, you just have to increase your sphere there. So do anything and everything that you can to get to know people. And as you're talking to them, so don't come out and just, I always say like diary of the mouth, which does not sound great. So I'm sorry to say that on, <laughs> on this live podcast, but don't just spew out. I'm in real estate. I'm in real estate, you know, get to know them, have real conversations. We talk about the Ford dialogue. So talk about family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. If you're at a networking party and you don't know what to talk about, I'm a high eye shocker, and I will talk, and I love to smile and meet people, and I will just work a room, and my goal is to have everyone know me the minute I leave that room. I understand that a lot of people are not like that. So when you go up and you talk to someone, you don't know what to say, I always say forward them, talk about their family, talk about occupation, recreation, and dreams, and get to know them. And as you're asking questions about them, if they're a nice person, they're going to ask questions about you back. And that's when you say, oh, I'm in real estate. And real estate is a fun topic for people. So then they're going to start asking you questions about that, where you can show your expertise. Awesome. And and you, your answer to that question actually leads us really well into the next question from Robert. He says, you work in two different states. How do you handle that time-wise, logistics, et cetera? So you'd mentioned that, hey, I've got two real estate teams. Uh, yeah. You did say that I've, I've relocated to North Carolina. How does that work managing two different teams in two different states? Well, since Michigan and North Carolina are right next to each other. <laughs> so yeah, 11 hour drive over 800 miles. Um, it wasn't actually a logistic move. Um, but what I do is I just, I set up people that I trust and that are first class customer service oriented people in each state. And then I do my best to work with them and to continue to train them to make them better. 
So I don't know if that really makes sense. I've got, I still sell real estate in both states. Pre-COVID, I was flying back and forth every two weeks. Obviously, that has really grounded me right now. Um, but I think it's it's one of those things that having systems, it makes it easily duplicatable. I mean, I took my lead tracker. I still have one for Michigan. Makes it super fun now because I'm working two lead trackers, one in Michigan and one in North Carolina. So I got to truly believe and invest in the system. But I have two top 50s. I have two lead trackers. And, you know, just having those systems in that organization is is key for me. And I'm crazy. Like, I barely sleep. I like to work. Well, and it sounds it sounds like the real answer to Robert's question is I'm two different full-time agents, right? I mean, that's, that's yeah, really like, what it sounds do like. Don't do it, Robert, if you didn't hear from. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. great. And I have amazing teams in each location. And I just, yeah, I love what I do. My 11-year-old daughter wants to, and I said that before on the, on the call, I'm a mom first. So I am very, very specific with my time and my family gets it first. And for some crazy reason, my 11 year old wants to be in real estate. So we'll see, but it makes it fun. That's, that is awesome. Uh, Brooke, thank you so much. We've got a few last questions here. Uh, it looks like people who maybe jumped in a little bit later, they're saying, what is this lead tracker? Right. And you've, <laughs> you've given, you've, you've given, and, and they can always go back and watch the recording, but give them a brief overview of what this lead tracker is. I love the ABC and that you're keeping track of that. Um, help answer that question before we wrap up here. Yeah, absolutely. And full disclosure, I mean, it is not something I totally came up with. I have made it my own, um, but it's it's through my coaching at Workman Success Systems that kind of initiated these systems for me. And then I um, plug and play all the way. And just because I'm the OCD Realtor, um, they, you know, were like, ah, sing into me and I had to use them. So the lead tracker is a place where you put all your leads. It's a place to track your leads and make sure that no one is slipping through the cracks, whether they are looking to buy a house next week or next decade. And it's someone that it's people that you follow up with consistently and constantly so they don't forget about you. So it's at the very least, even people that are not looking to buy for the next decade, you are putting them in there and you are following up once a month, even if it's, hey, I know you're not looking to buy for a year, but I want you to know I'm here if and when you are ready. Or I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball. Do you need anything right now? I know you're not ready now. And it's it's as simple as like cut and paste a text message. And, you know, because you're going to have a lot of people that you're nurturing over time. And it's simple. It's a simple method to do it. Awesome. Brooke, thank you so much. We're, we're right up to our time limit here. Thank you everybody for being with us. Uh, thank you, Brooke, for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, and, uh, and and taking time to educate us and, and share some things with us. If you'll hang tight, uh, we'll go over some things post-show here. But again, thank you, everybody. Uh, we are extremely grateful that you take time out of your busy days to, uh, to be here with us. As always, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or watching this on our website, uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the updates of this podcast. If you're not, make sure to go to theredx.com, click on our blog link, and you'll be able to register there for uh, for all of the updates on these podcasts as they come out. You can watch the previous ones that we've had. We're somewhere around 60 different episodes now, so lots of fantastic material. And as always, if you're a customer of ours, make sure to log into our customer forum that you can access right through Vortex. Uh, interact with other agents, ask a lot of these same questions that maybe you didn't get answered today or need clarification or just need more information and collaboration on with other agents. That's a, uh, a fantastic place to go. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for being with us. Again, Brooke, thank you. We're, uh, we're incredibly impressed and uh, we, we're excited to watch your career for another five years uh, moving forward. I think that uh, you'll be owning those two states here pretty shortly, which is awesome. So thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see everybody Wednesday.